It all started with me asking the internet a very simple question. Where is the best meal you had in San Diego? In this series, you'll come along with me and my friends to experience the best of San Diego food. I hope. Some of y'all got suspect taste. It's going to be fun. Trust me. Come on. Let's eat. I am an unapologetic sushi fiend. I could point you to roughly a bajillion places in San Diego where you can get an awesome sushi roll. But for this series, I wanted to go to some place I'd never been. So this week we're heading up to Oceanside for Wrench and Rodent. While it's easy to get lost in the shuffle of so many great sushi places in Southern California and San Diego in particular, Wrench and Rodent has a very interesting approach to how they do their food. Sustainable sourcing and non-waste are the orders of the day. They are very into using all cuts of the fish and not wasting anything. This often results in some really unique dishes. There's also an ever-changing list of specials, so you never know quite what to expect when you go in there. And I hadn't been there before, so I certainly didn't. I started with one of their sushi rolls called The Chronic. Spicy tuna, crab, and avocado, deep fried and served with a spicy aioli and a sweet citrus sauce. It's a little big and I'm generally not a fan of sushi that you can't eat in one bite, but the flavors and textures were definitely on point. Nice and crispy with a good amount of heat, which I'm always a fan of. Not exactly earth shattering or a new discovery for me, but definitely tasty. My main dish for the night was the yakisoba, which I had with tofu. Yes, I'm one of those weirdos who eats meat but still likes tofu. Look, I don't get me either. Alongside my yakisoba tofu were noodles and stir-fried vegetables. The whole dish had a really rich and savory nice flavor to it, and it had a great chew and a tenderness to the noodles and the tofu. Again, not unlike some other great yakisoba I've had in the city, but definitely good. Now, my friends and I were only here for the fish and the sushi, but there were some interesting things offered for dessert, so we just decided to run the menu and get some things to try. I ordered the Nutella cookies with salted caramel ice cream. The cookies were soft and delicious, and the ice cream was super tasty. Thick ribbons of caramel throughout and a nice saltiness to it. A very unexpected flex, but welcome at the end of this meal. Overall, my feelings about Wrench and Rodent are positive. The vibe is cool, the atmosphere is nice, the service is great, and the food is good. Now, would I go all the way up to Oceanside specifically to go there? Probably not. But would I welcome the opportunity to go again if it comes up? Absolutely. So that was my experience at Wrench and Roten, but now it's time to take it to the group and see what they thought. Let's head to Uptown Tavern in the heart of Hillcrest and get this discussion started. But before we get started on our discussion with our visit to Wrench and Roden, I wanted to take a moment and give a big shout out to our very gracious hosts for tonight's recap recording, Uptown Tavern. Located in the heart of Hillcrest, Uptown Tavern is your home away from home in the community. Whether you're looking for a great place to hang with friends over some cocktails and delicious shareable plates, or a wild weekend outing, the staff at Uptown Tavern has got you covered. You can experience everything from the intimate setting of their Aero Lounge and private bar, or throw down on the dance floor with great DJs in the main bar on the weekends. Unwind after a long day at work, catch the big game, or host your own private event. Uptown Tavern is the home away from home and family you've been looking for. Now tonight, uh, this, this one's gonna be a little interesting for a number of reasons and we'll get into that in a second. But first, we gotta talk about this name. <laughs> the, the place is called Wrench and Rodent. And I, I, I just, I, that is so funny to me because to me, it's sort of like opening a strip club and naming it Chlamydia on tap. <laughs> so, yeah. But this name has been a while, been around for a while. It's not like some new, hey, the hipsters like weird names. Let's name it a weird, weird thing. It's like, no, this has always been wrench and rodent. Yeah, but it still comes off like, come on down to Itchy's Furniture, like, we, you know. <laughs> yeah, my mom asked, uh, where are you going for this episode? And I was like, oh, it's um like a sushi and fish place up in Oceanside. I didn't want to say her the name. She was like. What's it called though? And I was like, uh, wrench and rodent. She's like, that sounds disgusting. I, this is what I'm saying. It, it, sound it, really it sounds like the working title of Ratatouille. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, 
I just, it's such a bold thing. Well, I, I did discover how that came about. The name actually comes from the founder. Uh, it is a nod, a nod to his English heritage and calls to mind the lighthearted irreverence he hopes to convey through the food, as well as a commitment to shaking up the food system. So maybe a little hipstery, I don't know. But in, in any event, it's memorable. I mean, I, I, will, I will say that I, I, again, come on down to Amber Alert Child Care. Like why? <laughs> could do this all day. Uh, about that, you're talking about the founder. He was there that night serving tables. Oh. Like, we were just sat down, he was serving the table right next to us. He he still works in the restaurant nightly. Which is great, and the service was fantastic. They offer a number of craft cocktails, and some of the panel partook of some of those. Shannon, your second cocktail was one that David also ordered. It was the Tokyo Sunshine. Vodka soju spirits, simple syrup, Japanese yuzu, and sweet citrus with a salt rim. Take us through that. Yeah, so David let me try a sip of his um, when I had my first drink and I was like, oh, that is so much better than mine. So when it was time and I was like, ah, I do feel like one more, I ordered that one and it was, you know, a little sweet, but also a little salty, kind of refreshing. Um, and it just, it had flavor and it was, it was delightful. What do you think, David? I really liked that. It, it, it's a good, it's a good drink. It was flavorful. I like the salt rim. I like the fruity flavor of the drink. It's just a problem I have with soju in general. It just, it is not vodka. They call it soju vodka. That is not vodka. I, that's not a real cocktail. But it was tasty. So you know that was fine. But it wasn't. It, it didn't hit you like a vodka cocktail would hit you. Well, and all their cocktails are soju based. And I just, in general, it's not about wrench and rodent, it's soju. I just don't find that to really have the same effect as vodka. And they bill it as vodka, and I don't really think it is. But it, yeah, so I was, I guess, if we tried other cocktails, it would be probably the same because we're just not into soju. And speaking of the other cocktails, the only one that I did try was the one that Suzanne ordered. That was the Soul Mule Gin Soju Spirit Black Currant. Japanese yuzu, ginger beer, and a twist of lime. How was that? Delicious, actually. Um, you know, I don't have a problem with soju. I thought, it, I, I can understand like that it's, it doesn't always deliver the flavor. In this case, the mule actually did taste exactly as it should. It tasted like a classic mule. Really refreshing, you had that bite from the ginger, the sweetness from the berries, and the color was great. So yeah, I would absolutely order that again. Super good. Yeah, I, I thought it was really refreshing and very sweet. I, I didn't think it was anything particularly special. It, for me, it, it, it kind of tasted like a number of cocktails I've had elsewhere. I feel like the, the ginger beer was doing the majority of the heavy lifting, which I'm not about to complain about because I love ginger everything. Same. <laughs> so that's, I, I was very happy with that. The plates started arriving at the table, and one of the most unique dishes that Wrench and Roden offers is their fish rib karage. Now, with karage, it's usually chicken that's breaded and fried and served with a, a sauce. This was something very, very different. And Suzanne, I think you were the one who actually ordered it. Yeah. Take us through this dish. Karage was an interesting choice of description. <laughs> they should have left it at fish rib because when I think of karage, much as you mentioned, I think of crunch, I think texture. Um, that's what stands out with karage chicken. So it was a delicious dish, don't get me wrong, and super shareable, large portion. Um, the sauce was really nice and sweet, and it had a light, really delicate fry on it, but I wouldn't call it karage. I think you also said it was one of your favorite bites. Yeah, I, I, I tried it and I really enjoyed it. It was juicy, the fish was delicious, it wasn't overcooked. The crunch on the outside was great. I probably shouldn't have had it because I tend to be gluten-free, but I, just wanted to try it and it was really good and worth it. It it was a it was a fish rib and it was like you would eat a regular rib, but it was a fish rib, so it was like Yeah. There's a weapon in there. Yes. <laughs> the other not sushi dish that made its way to the table was the chicken fried rice. And David, you ordered the chicken fried rice. Well, did it, was it substantial enough for like a main center of the plate dish or what was it like? I really enjoyed it. I thought that they chopped up the vegetables really small, which made me very happy because I hate when you get fried rice and there's a giant chunk of carrot in there that's hard to chew. This was really finely diced and I was surprised to find cauliflower chopped up in little bits in there. And it was a really nice surprise to mm -hmm. see that in the fried rice. You, you thought there was some sort of a strange flavor or texture to I, it? I don't know that strange is the word I would use. Well, that's strange. It was buttery. 
in a way that I'm not used to fried rice being. And a few other people co-signed. Yeah. I agree with you completely. Well, I will say though, I really, I tried just a little bit of your fried rice. It was delicious. I had I had FOMO. I was really wanting more fried rice. I thought it was really, really good. There was a really nice sear on the chicken. Like you don't normally find chicken in, in fried rice made with that much care. Like it's, I don't wanna say it's like boiled, but it's usually cooked a bit lighter, but I really liked, there was a brownness to the chicken. Yeah, everything about the fried rice was really good. I think what you were tasting was the oil that they used and fried rice can be greasy. This was not greasy, but it did have, uh, you, you could taste that there was a coating of some sort of oil on it and it didn't take away from it. It was fantastic. It was a really, really good fried rice. David, you ordered the rainbow roll, crab with a K, cucumber and avocado topped with tuna, yellowtail, salmon and avocado. How was that? I really enjoyed it. The fish was super fresh and delicious um, and beautiful, beautiful presentation. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed this, it. This place does a lot of really beautiful plates, like really impressive plates of food. In addition to regular rolls, they also have a selection of nigiri, which is just a little, a little, you know, a, a ball of rice packed by hand with usually like one protein or something on it. And Shannon, you ordered the black card nigiri with miso truffle glaze. What was that the winner? That was my favorite. It was just like the fish was good, but like with the truffle oil coming through, and that's something that is one of our favorite flavors. Mm -hmm. It was just delightful and it made my mouth happy, made my tummy happy, like everything that I was hoping. And it came out really beautiful, like the plating. Um, that was my favorite thing. If I was to go back there, I would hands down order that again. Okay, and you guys also had the scallop nigiri. Scallop is on one of my no fly lists for uh, seafood I refuse to eat because I'm a giant child. Uh, how, how was that for you? Um, the, the scallop was soft and buttery and just melt in your mouth, just delicious. I think because we had it so early in the, what we got, mm -hmm. it had a chance to like just be its, be what scallop can be. You both had the swordfish nigiri with bacon guava jam. And we're gonna talk about that because I like all three of those words. Yeah, the, the bacon guava jam is definitely what stands out most about that piece of nigiri. Uh, the swordfish, you can barely kind of register that it's there. And, and then it's only because it's been lightly seared and you can taste that the searing of it. Um, but I mean, the bacon guava jam was, was a rock star. And I mean, someone ordered it as a side just independently. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know you could do that. And then David was like... <laughs> I was half joking when he bought the food out and he described what he said. And he said, this comes with the bacon guava jam. And then he said, can I get you anything else? I'm like, I want a side of the bacon guava jam. And he said, okay, I really didn't expect it. And I took every piece of chicken out of that fried rice mm -hmm. and dipped it in that bacon guava jam. And boy, was I happy. It's such an impressive flavor that you, it, whatever you put it on, it. you could put it on just a piece of rice and be happy. And I would. And I did, <laughs> and it was great. I was very happy with that. One of probably the most unique pieces of nigiri I saw was actually ordered by Suzanne. They serve an anchovy nigiri. What the hell is that? Um, well, firstly, I, I love anchovies. I love briny things like team brine, all about it. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I was intrigued because as you said, you don't see that every day, so had to get it. Um, I will say that it wasn't briny, surprisingly. Um, super buttery. You definitely got the anchovy flavor. Um, so was it, I have to ask because like I am, my, my whole knowledge of anchovies are like, they're eaten whole and they come out of a can. <laughs> and like, if you are, a boxcar hobo, this is your dinner on the corner. But I understand that it's a delicacy and some people are like, was this a whole fish or was it like a little filet? It, was a, it looked like it was a little, mm, it would be a little filet of, of anchovy. I think it was just butterfly. Tiny. I think it was just butterfly, honestly. Um, okay. But they had sort of a mustard sauce on it. It's chef's mustard sauce, whatever that is. Um, I felt like it. I could have forgone that or use less of it, although it, it was a nice accent. I think I would have probably enjoyed a ponzu a little bit more. Okay. Um, Cause the mustard was a bit more, a bit stronger. And if I order the anchovy, it's cause I want to 
enjoy the flavor of the anchovy. Right. Um, you want and that they wrong. did. It was overall really a uh, successful experience, but that's just my edit because that's what, that's how I do. But um, yeah, I would definitely order it again. It was it was good. I I feel like if the anchovy had been as briny as you were kind of hoping it was, maybe the mustard might have that that combination yeah. might have been a little too much. I like the I typically like the salt pack. Like you know, you you're thinking can like you can do a salt pack anchovy, which is going to give you a much different texture and much different flavor. Um, that definitely was not this, mm -hmm. but it was still really good. Like I would I would do it again. You know, I would have it again for sure. Okay. Uh, another one of the nigiri that you ordered was the salmon nigiri with sweet citrus salt. Try saying that three times fast. Yeah. Um, I sort of, I think I failed. I sort of like was when I was ordering, I see salmon and I'm all over it because I love salmon. I, but, as a, I, I um, also do. Yeah. Always, always order salmon when it's on a menu for sushi. It's definitely um, something I enjoy. But this had a, literally a sweet citrus salt. Emphasis on the sweet. Okay. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of salt, mm -hmm. and I was expecting, I think, more salt than sweet, and it it just overpowered the flavor of the salmon, which is typically a very buttery, like you know, meaty fish. Right. Um, so that, yeah, I didn't love that. I did not love that. That mm, sparingly. If they maybe torched it, um, like a seared salmon or like a cooked an actual filet that had that that same treatment, mm -hmm. then I would have been all over it. But for raw nigiri salmon, I just, yeah, no, it just didn't. It's a little too much. A little too much. One of the things that was very surprising to me about Wrench and Roden is they had a selection of desserts that was actually larger than I was expecting. One of the things that was very unique uh, was actually what Shannon ordered for dessert, a rosé poached pear served with vanilla whipped cream and berries. Take us through that. Oh, I made the right choice. This was another gorgeous plating. Yeah, oh, just beautiful plating um, and just taking little slices off the pear and putting it through everything, kind of get a bite of everything. It was wonderful and it was really light. So I didn't feel like, oh no, like I ate too much. Can I get the dessert after I ate? Like I should have done that. I felt fine. I felt really, really good. And I, I insisted that everyone at the table try it because it was just wonderful and light and sweet. And it was just delightful. Um, it makes me want to try to recreate that at home. <laughs> because it's so good. And I know you're you're typically not a big fan of wine-based or like sparkling, but you you really loved the pear. I did love the pear, the, I, and, and I thought that when I tried it. I'm like, I wanna try this, but I don't know if I like it because of the rosé, but the rosé was really subtle. It was mm -hmm. delicious and um, not at all whiny in any way. You, it, it, it gave the pear a nice flavor without being overpowering in any way. I thought that was a really beautifully well done dessert. I thought that was really good. The final dessert of the night was ordered by Suzanne, the bread pudding. Now I know there were some some issues with it. What uh, to put, it, put us at the scene? Oh dear. Um, <laughs> firstly, oh dear. Um, bread pudding is kind of a blank slate dessert. You know, you can really adapt those flavors um, to anything. Um, this was, it was just very, not only was it rather basic, but I don't think it was very well executed either because the amount of butter that was used, and I'm, I love butter, okay? Like who am I to complain about butter normally? But so all the butter didn't go in it was the Dave's all, fried rice. Is so no, not at all. It was all the butter, not a lot of flavor that stood out to me. And it was incredibly dense. It, it needed to be, it was cold. So bread pudding really to like bring out any flavors, you're, you want to warm that up. Um, uh, it would have benefited from a sauce. And I feel like that's why it's a blank slate. And for a restaurant that does so well at having an avant-garde approach, this is a perfect place to kind of play. You know, um, give me an yuzu sauce, give me a plum wine sauce, mm -hmm. you know, do something with that. The fact that it was cold was, was hard to get past. Yeah. So it was, it was, I didn't finish my dessert, which I mean, if you know me, that's, that, that doesn't happen guys. I know, I like almost licked my plate. I had to stop myself and then like, yeah, I'm in a nice place. I can't just be licking plates <laughs> willy nilly. Do you, Shannon. Do you? I will be honest here. This is probably one of the most difficult reviews I've had to do this entire season because the hard ones are never the places that are terrible. That's easy. And it's never the places that are outstanding. That is also easy. This to me 
was good. It was a walk, don't run kind of place. Aside from Suzanne, all of us live 30 to 40 minutes away from Oceanside, which is where Wrench and Rodent is. And the other big sticking point for me was that Wrench and Rodent is literally walking distance from the best restaurant I have been to this season, which is Dijamara. So if I find myself in Oceanside, I can't imagine any reason I would pick this place over Dijamara. But that having been said, I don't want to dissuade anybody from going there because I thought it was really good, just nothing earth shattering. And I think, so let, let's, let's go around the room as we do. Would you go back? Um, I actually, I have, in fairness, I have not been back in a while. It's mm -hmm. been a while since I've hit up Brunch and Rodent. It. Um, but I will say their menu, although this was kind of a miss for me this time, I will go back. Their menu changes. Yeah. So you can count on that. So um, super, super talented chef and owner. Um, I have had incredible experiences in the past. So this, this was just... You know, I want to call it an isolated event. I maybe I just didn't order the things that I should have, but because um, Dave's fried rice was amazing, there were definitely things that I tried while we were there that were delicious. They just weren't all on my plate. But, <laughs> but, um, I mean, that's the way it goes for me too. That's yeah. But I would go back because I've I've had this is the first time that I've been there that I was had any level of disappointment. So mm -hmm. I, I look forward to seeing what they do. Um, I am a local to Oceanside mm -hmm. and. They've been, you know, kind of on the forefront of the food scene for the better part, at least 10 years um, with various, like I said, various restaurants that they own and they're all really great. So yeah, they'll definitely see me again. I enjoyed my meal. I loved our waiter. I thought he gave us great service and was very personable. I thought the atmosphere was charming, but I, it's not local for me. So it would not be something that I would be taking a 40 minute drive to go go to but should I find myself in Oceanside which sometimes I do because my parents live there this mm -hmm. would be some place that I would definitely consider going back to that fried rice really was very very good and the sushi was was very good too but nothing that I would be like let's let's go there Let, let's take a 40 minute drive to get this yeah I have to agree for the price and for how long it takes us to get there just because of where we live it's, it's not a destination restaurant for me. If you're in Oceanside, if you're doing things there, absolutely, uh, there was nothing wrong with what we had, but I can get better for that same price point without driving 45 minutes each way. Yeah, I feel like if we were there anyway, or if we were like meeting Suzanne, because she is one of the close people to us that lives in Oceanside, um, you know, we could we could go back there and I would be like, hey, do you have anything with a black cod like last time? Because they oh. actually change up their menu. Um, or those scallops. Oh, man, those oh, scallops yeah, yeah. were really good. And if you end up there, yeah. get those get or those early maybe, and enjoy them. you know, we're just going there for dessert and we're all just going to get the pear. And that's fine because, you know, if we were already up there, that would be perfect. I also really love the fact to walk it back to what you said that they do change their menu so much because they are focused on sustainable and using all the parts of the fit and coming up with these really cool things. You know, I never thought anchovy nigiri was a thing ever, but I wouldn't eat it, but I'm fascinated. If I found myself in Oceanside, I, I would definitely go back. I don't know that it was my favorite of the season, but I did enjoy it and I would recommend anyone who is in proximity to go. I, I did find one thing fascinating and that's if you, as you're walking through the restaurant, you see a bunch of different kind of like wine cooler, drink cooler kind of refrigerators kind of positioned throughout. And if you look in them, that's where they're dry aging their fish for their various dry aged sushis and dry aged nigiris. So I think that was, there was a lot of character in that. To touch on that, they also, um, I'm not sure if you know, but they actually do grow a lot of their fresh produce themselves as well. Nice. So they're really dedicated to keeping it local, sustainable, mm -hmm. And of course, having that, you know, a different approach to things, which I think is, is fantastic. We love that. And it's, and it's an, it's an accomplishment to have been around that long, especially because it's so difficult for a restaurant when you can innovate and stay committed to those principles and remain open and be successful. That's, that is worth supporting. And there you have it. If you know of a great spot in San Diego, you think I should try email me at the boy who ate San Diego at gmail.com. Or you can link to one of my socials, which will be attached to this video. See you next time.